you know Bharat, I love our comment section, but I actually feel really bad for them at the same time. Oh, why, Kadesh? So every time we post a video, you know, we deliver the value, we deliver the education. But the comment section, there are so many people asking so many doubts that unfortunately just get swept under the rug because by the time we look back at the video, it's been two to three weeks. So have a look at some of the comments. Okay. Explain agentic workflows. What's an AI-driven ops dashboard? Interesting question. Can I build a real-time bug tracker? Show us how actu actually automation works. Oh, you're right, Kade. So many interesting questions. Yeah, so what I was trying to figure out is, look, we have a content bank right here in our comment section. But how do we take some of these comments and turn them into a reality or help these people at the same time? Yeah, that's a, that's a very valid question. Uh, when I wanted to learn swimming, I didn't look at videos alone. I actually jumped into the water to swim. Why don't we do that now? Instead of talking theory, why don't we actually build a use case? I really like that idea of jumping in directly. So how do you suggest we start? Let's pick one comment, take one use case and actually build it now. Alright, sort it. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so as Bharat said, we're going to jump in straight, we're going to choose a comment. But here's the thing. Half of these tech terms, whether you're looking at agentic workflows, autonomous systems, intelligent automation, they sound like you need a PhD and at least 10 engineers. Or loads of money. Or <laughs> loads of money. See, but honestly, these concepts are surprisingly simple. That is true. But the problem is, no one shows you how they actually work in practice. Exactly. So, let's do that. Today, we pick one comment, one tech concept, and we actually build a working version of it. And if you have the time, we're going to try to do a second one. Ah, uh, no rushing. Let's take our time and start doing it now. Oh, and by the way, the tool that we're going to be using today is Zoho Creator. It's low code, but you can build real apps, databases, forms, workflows, dashboards, the whole thing. For those of you who don't know, we've done a video that we released recently where we went into WeWork and we used Zoho Creator for different companies and tried helping them create some internal tools. So if you haven't checked, please click on the link over here, over here, wherever the editor decides to put it. That's a good video. Okay, let's get into finding a comment now. All right. Explain blockchain. <laughs> Not quite. What's Web3? <laughs> That's what a 2023 question. <laughs> oh, here is a nice one, Kadesh. What even is an ops dashboard? So many YC companies simplify Jira and still every company needs their own. That's actually a great one. No? Oh, here is another. Hmm. Can you actually show how workflows and automation actually work in real life? and not just in theory. So let's combine these two. We build a simple op dashboard or slash a issue tracker and show how workflows automate the boring stuff. Yeah, what basically many startups sell for a few hundred dollars. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so let's do it. So we'll build a working version inside Zoho Creator right now. I'm excited. Let's do it. So before we start clicking things, here's the app that we're building. We're making a simple issue tracker, think Jira or Asana, but much more minimal. So here are a couple of things that you'll be able to do. You can log issues like website is down, fix login, or ship this new feature. You can also assign those issues to people. And last but not least, you can track the status, whether it's new, in progress, blocked, or done. And let's add a fun part to it. Let's build some workflows that will automatically notify people, that will update records, and keep an activity trail. That way, we are not just looking at a system of records. It's not just a database. It's a completely functional system. Awesome. Exactly. So when people say AI ops dashboard or automated workflows, most of the time it's just this. So if something happens, do something else. That's basically the logic. That's true. Okay, let's build it now. All right. So this is the first screen in Creator. And we have four options, as you can see. Create using Zia, create from scratch, create from gallery, and import from file. So today we'll use Zia to set up the skeleton and then we'll customize. Zia is basically your intelligent app builder, AI powered. You describe what you want and the system builds the application. And if you're scared about writing prompts, let's go to ChatGPT now and create a prompt that we need. I am opening ChatGPT and let me say I'm building an issue tracking app in Zoho Creator. What do I need? I need forms to log, issues with title, description, status, assignee, due date. I need workflows to notify assignees and log activity. I need a dashboard to see everything. Okay. Give me a detailed prompt, my friend. Okay, we have the prompt now. So considering that you've already done that, let's just take this prompt. Okay. Paste it over here in Zoho Creator. Okay, so Zia now reads this and fills the entire app. In under a minute. Ah, all right. Now the app is ready. First, we have an overview dashboard, not bad. See, this is exactly why I like starting with Zia. You know, so you can already see that we've had the overview of the dashboard. We have the issue distribution by priority, reminder types, small timeline of recent activities also. Now we can see how bad the state is. Okay, so here is something a little intimidating. I'm not going to lie. So over here, you can see this all issues. Once you click on this, you're going to see a list of every single issue from title, priority, who is assigned to, status, due date. So let's click log issue form. 
So now Zia has also created a form to hit new issues. And these are going to be issues like title, description, priority, status, due date, okay, date, reported by. Okay, so this is exactly what we asked for. And you didn't drag and drop any field manually yet. It was all yeah. auto-generated. All right, so now we're in edit mode. Let's clean this up and show how the workflows actually work. So first, let's go to the structure. Okay, inside the issues form. Okay, we can keep this feed. So in, let's rename issue name to issue title. The priority is low, medium, high, and urgent. Now, uh, what's the next thing? Status options. Okay. Okay. New, in progress, block, done. Let's add an assignee field as well. Assignee is a lookup to users. So, which is so assignee is a lookup to users, which Zia has already added. <laughs> This is the back-end mapping and architecture people talk about in uh, LinkedIn. Yeah. It's, it's just naming the uh, fields properly. <laughs> all right, so now we're going to move on to workflows, ladies and gentlemen. Bharat, the floor is all yours. This is where automation magic happens. Let's see what Zia has done for us. There are a couple of workflows that Zia has made already. Hmm. Let's add our simple one. When a new issue is created, what do we want? Uh, we want an email to be sent to someone saying, hey, there is an issue, you have to solve it. And maybe after the person works, you need to get an email back saying the issue is solved. So let's create that workflow now. We create an activity log and say issue is created. All right, so now we have data and logic. So it's time to take the app and make it look like a proper ops tool. So in the live app, what we're going to do is, see these three dots over here, okay. And you'll see the options for Kanban, Calendar, Timeline, and more. So first, let's make Kanban view. I think it's highly popular. A lot of organizations are still with this structure. And easy to understand. Yes. Absolutely. So, place it on issues form, group by status. Now we have columns for new, in progress, blocked, and done. So each issue over here is a card. Drag and drop to change the status. That's all you need. Yeah, that's already 80% of what you see every day. Yeah. So, okay, now we're moving on to the last part. I'm not a huge fan of the aesthetic of this application, so I don't think anyone's going to open it twice. Maybe you should change the theme. Yeah, let's try that out. All right, so let's go to the application settings. Let's come to theme. Switch to a simple dark or light theme. Okay, let's choose a different accent color. Add a logo. Upload this photo. Okay. Also, all of this works on mobile by default. Same forms, same dashboards, just resized, and you don't need to build a separate application. Yeah, it's it's just available on mobile assets. Yeah, absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so, so if we can build it this fast and creative, it means the concept isn't insanely complex. It's just wrapped in really bad jargon. How about we make this a series, Kadesh? That sounds interesting. Yeah. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, what you need to do is you just need to drop the most confusing tech term in the comments. Uh, give some examples, what would you say? Portals, customer portals, vendor portals, approval workflows, yeah. agentic tools, whatever. Whatever, yeah, exactly. And we'll pick the one and build the app behind it. No theory, just build it. Stay from scratch. And if you got excited uh, seeing what you saw, there is a free plan available for Zoho Creator. The link is available in the comment. Please feel free to go and try it out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. That was today's episode with Bharat in the office with us. So as always, keep building and keep experimenting.